guard. All right. <laughs> Welcome to Torture Garden. I'm Jimmy. I'm Scott. And <laughs> A- after some, some severe technical oh difficulties, like, we are. This is just like a, this is going to be a weekly occurrence. It's going to be like a meme, you know, like on this. It's just okay. every week we're going to open yeah. up like laughing because of the shit we've had to deal with. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it'll be a meme to us. Who, who are we kidding? It's never going to get big enough to, to spread around the internet. I, I yeah, don't like exactly. that good old melon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, we, we our, our memes aren't as funny. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not as creative. Uh, Anyway, uh, I, I thought that uh, we were – so we were actually going to be doing two episodes today, um, and but I thought this first one was – this first one is something I really wanted to talk about with Scott uh, because I've been trying to get him into Degan Dance for years now, and, um, you know, it, it's it's not that he doesn't want to try it. It's just, you know, you know time, you know. Um, and so, funny story – he, oh yeah, yeah. The, the, so the literally, Jimmy yeah. gave. I think you have pretty much every Dead Can Dance album, right? Yeah, I. I think the only one I don't have is Anastasis, which is like the newest one. Yeah. So I don't know if Jimmy gave me all of them, but uh, most. You, you gave me most of them, and I ripped them all to my laptop. And it was either that day or like the next day or a few days later, it shit the bed, and it just would not work at all. And, you know, literally all my music was on that laptop and I, I didn't have a, a hard drive or, you know, a backup drive. And it just it was running. I could use it, but it was running so slowly that I just couldn't transfer files. So I was like, you know what? You know, a loss is a loss. Yeah. Um, well, in, in any case, uh, we're going to talk about Deccan Dance. So I'm just going to go over some really quick notes. Just get it out of the way. Deccan Dance is an Australian band founded in 1981 by Brendan Perry and Lisa Gerrard. Uh, they broke up in 1998, reunited briefly for a tour in 2005, and then reformed in 2011. And um, their style is, uh, it's it, it's a little odd. Uh, their, their early, really, really early work was sort of post-punky. It sort of helped develop what's called dark wave, uh, specifically like neoclassical dark wave, which mm-hmm. I think when you get that, specific with certain genres they stop meaning anything um but <laughs> i nonetheless uh i but there was a clear influence of world music uh throughout their early stuff which ended up becoming moving to the forefront for their later albums uh so scott i i gotta know what what do you think so um <laughs> I, I i feel I know you've been trying to get me get me into them for a while. I didn't I didn't dislike any like most of what I heard. It just it didn't really resonate with me that much. Yeah. No, I, um, that's fine. I did um, like I, I, I like their albums to varying degrees, and I, I will say that um, the Serpent's Egg I liked the most. And of the albums we listened to, there were a couple songs which I thought were phenomenal and really really resonated with me. Um, but overall. There are just a, a few minor issues I have with some of their albums. Uh, one of their albums I really uh, didn't vibe with. Uh, but oh, which, which one was that? I really didn't like Aeon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But for the most part, I really appreciated what... Uh, it's one of those artists where as soon as you listen to them and know where they fall in you know in terms of you know, what decade they were operating in, you know, what kind of scene and what they were doing, you understand how important they were. Because as I was listening to them, kind of like you mentioned, you know, very specific genre tag, but the sounds that they were peddling, I, I you know, uh, Zola, Zola Jesus released a great album this year uh, called Akovi, and I started getting to her music more. She makes Dark, dark Wave um, today. Totally heard the influence of Dead Can Dance. And a lot of modern po- post-punk bands, especially the more ethereal, like ambient, kind of darker post-punk bands today, really I could hear the Dead Can Dance influence. It was very, you know, clear that they took from that kind of spacey, you know, vibe and whatnot. Um, you know, it's funny that you bring up post-punk because I, I actually that, that was the reason I included the uh, the initial self-titled album, which also yes. for, just for everybody noting, we uh, I. I signed Scott uh, four <laughs> albums to listen to. Uh, their self-titled debut, The Serpent's Egg, Aeon, or Aeon, however you say it, and then uh, Into the Labyrinth. 
but um yeah i i, I when i gave i i i had the self-titled specifically mine for you just because i know how much of a post-punk fan you are um and i thought you might just find you know i i i, I didn't think you would fall in love with it but i think you would find it interesting uh just for what they're doing in that album no absolutely i yeah. i i heard it, it really was an interesting amalgamation of a lot of different artists i like uh, and of course you know since they preceded them uh, for the most part um mm. like uh, uh, i'm trying to pull up a list but obviously well they didn't precede this artist but i really liked how they built off the palette that uh, Joy Division did on Closer, especially. It really resonated with kind of, um, obviously, with Unknown Pleasures, Joy Division started to you know, create post-punk, and, 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 or not create, but really start to define its characteristics. And Joy Division, they started to spread the palette a lot wider. And I think uh, Dead Can Dance kind of moved from there. Um, I can see that. Uh, which was really, really interesting. But you know, from there, it was really cool because... Uh, you know, I heard a lot of stuff, uh, especially with the folk influences that reminded me of Jarbo and some of Swan's albums, uh, you know, from their kind of mid period, uh, kind of reminded me a little bit of Coil, especially, uh, uh, forget, I don't remember, uh, the, the guy's names, but his, his vocal in Dead Can Dance reminded me a little bit of, of Coil's vocals. Oh, but Brendan Perry. Yeah. It reminded me a little bit of that. Uh, I really liked how they incorporated subtly world music. Uh, which is something that they do, you know, world music and folk music. Uh, you know, it's something that if people are too heavy handed with it, it can get a little kind of campy and corny, but I really do yeah. appreciate how they weave it into the structure of their songs. Um, so the debut, I really, really, I, I enjoy quite a bit. Um, what, what, what did you so you, oh yeah, you said you enjoyed Serpent's Egg the most though? Uh, yeah. So um, the one takeaway I will say is that, um, their albums overall, some of them were structured a little oddly in that they kind of, like a few of them, they'd have these really long songs, or not really long, but, you know, relatively long, seven, eight minutes. Yeah. And then they'd have a couple of, like, one or two minute songs in between. And it just, it felt kind of odd. You know, listening to it as a piece yeah. wasn't that big a deal. But it, it I, I don't know if it was necessarily a negative, but it was interesting because it, it kind of... You had different moods and whatnot, but yeah. Serpent's Egg. I really loved the um, uh, the songs the in, the, in the in the Kingdom of the Bl uh, Blind, the One-Eyed or Kings. It it kind of reminded me of a stripped back, more acoustic and analog Depeche Mode to a degree. Huh. Uh, it was just it had that epic feel, and it was really catchy and really gorgeous. Uh, uh, Ulysses, I got the same vibe. Um, overall, I really enjoyed the album, but those two songs really, you know, stuck out to me, and I, I love those a lot. Um, what did you think of the uh, the first track, the Hosa Seraphim? I liked it. It was a little, it was a little long. Um, yeah. I I won't, I won't say like I loved it, but I did I did enjoy it. Uh, really, there wasn't other than uh, Aeon, which you know we'll get to later. There really wasn't a song or an album I disliked. Uh, it's just after a while. You know, each each song you know listening to them as a whole but also each album it just kind of felt like especially uh the first one i noticed this the most it felt a little too long like almost that they oh, were well maybe... i actually the uh i that's i probably forgot to mention that the uh the first album actually includes this ep that they did oh um, okay called the garden of earthly delights so yeah it is a little longer um but you know a I think they, when I was listening to it all over again, I, I sort of noticed that like the earlier albums, their songwriting isn't exactly top notch, like I especially on like the self titled, like they're like a lot of the songs just end, like like they, they just fade out. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and I I I was surprised at that because like they they do a good job of creating good groove and like you know they, they, I think they're excellent musicians. I mean I think Lisa Gerard's vocals are absolutely incredible but we'll, we'll go back to that in a little bit but i i was surprised how the songwriting just was sort of weak on the first time i i definitely i think it gets stronger mm -hmm. as time goes um but yeah i i definitely see what you mean with like the the strange 
types of you know like the song lengths because i i, I really don't th- i think the only time that they really had an album that felt like an album was probably aeon but i but i i'm not really i think that's debatable i i i actually skipped over um a couple of their albums uh like after after the self-titled there's uh i think within the realm of a dying sun and spleen and ideal which are i i they aren't bad albums by any means but they don't they never really hit me as hard as these other ones so i just figured okay we'll just you know mm-hmm. go with these ones but um yeah i yeah i, I just on a personal level like i i really they, they, they're a band that i discovered in uh an undergraduate you know a long time long long time ago and i just really got into them because um you know i like we were talking about this on the beatles uh that i, I would hear like these world this world music that i just never heard before and it just enthralled me so much mm-hmm. and this is just that pumped up to 10 for me like i like okay they, i was thinking of um so the the track the carnival is over from into the labyrinth um there's actually i can specifically remember this that uh the first time i ever played the elder scrolls oblivion um there's this section where you get out of it you've played it right you've played oblivion yeah not like yeah. extensively but yeah yeah but well, if you remember at the beginning they, there's a section where you you get out of jail and for the first time you see cyrodiil mm-hmm. and it's nothing but like fields and I was so like the music that I was playing during this time. I, I was I had never, I, and I I don't think I've still ever had quite an experience like that. And uh, the carnival is over really reminded me of that because it had like these these really creepy acoustic guitar chords on them and like just the, these certain licks and it just like it just oozed with like this this magic. I I don't know. I just really like it. And so you know like. I, I think also from I, I actually really started listening to them a lot when I started reading fantasy for the first time too, so I all these all these uh, albums actually have really good memories of me, um, you know, reading like uh, the Wheel of Time series and stuff like that, <laughs> and it's it's weird how well they actually work because like they they have like a very fantastical feel, which I mean. It really shouldn't be surprising given that um, Lisa Gerard actually contributed to the uh, Gladiator soundtrack. Um, but yeah, I I, I, I really I, I think they're a great band. Um, yeah, I don't think they're perfect by any means, but I think they're really underrated. Um, they, they, they definitely deserve more credit. No, for sure. Like you know, obviously, like I mentioned, their influence alone was. Uh, undeniable just from listening to them you know oh i i can hear this band i can hear that band uh and I, i'm not trying to be overly negative uh i yeah, just no, no. Uh, it did not it didn't resonate with me as much as i assume it resonated with you um, yeah, yeah, no i i it's the thing i'm, I'm not i'm not gonna shit on you for that man to each their own man but it was it was incredibly interesting like you said especially as they developed their sound uh the serpent's egg in particular you had this really clean synthesis of, you know, a lot of bands will incorporate folk or world elements, and it'll kind of feel like it's on top. You know, it'll feel like yeah. you have the song, but then, then you have these elements on. I really enjoyed how they incorporated them. It felt really part of the track, uh, yeah. which I really appreciated. Um, I, I, I definitely like that. Like, like they don't... Um they don't... It's not like they're pandering to the music. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more like they're using it as a tool, uh, you know as sort of like you, you know like a part of their musical arsenal exactly they, it like it doesn't define their voice it only you know increases uh their own definition of their own voice in a way yeah. um like i really i really really like that idea of, of how they use it you know i the only people i can think of that really do the same justice though in a different way is uh Dave, uh, Brian Eno and David Byrne when they in my life in the bush of ghosts mm, yeah um, but th- that's a little bit different because uh, th- they're using samples mm-hmm. throughout that this is all like for the most part that they they had like musicians coming in and playing this um, I think if I remember I I want to say that into the labyrinth is the first time that they actually played all the instruments in it uh, but I'm not totally sure but I 
like I mean they they do play a couple instruments like Lisa Gerard plays uh Yanquin, which is like a Chinese hammered dulcimer. Um, which they, there are some really great tracks of uh there's some videos of her playing it online that are like really cool. Uh but, I love I love the hammer dulcimer. Uh, yeah. Oh black- yeah, I I was reading your uh, botanist thing. Yeah, today. there's there's a black yeah. metal band called Botanist which do- they use dulcimers in place of guitars and it's fantastic <clears throat> oh, so yeah, if, you, if you if you aren't familiar with what the dulcimer sounds like it has a really interesting sound that i'm a huge fan of yeah they she, she does she has some pretty cool stuff but um so i i really wanted to what, what what didn't you like about eon so it was clear from the outset it was going to be a little different from the albums i heard before and then you know the <clears throat> albums after it because uh, i listened to them in chronological order uh, often were different as well. It just felt very dated. The 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 kind of the instrumentation, the synth tones, or whatever they used to create, because it had that that Renaissance feel, almost that Baroque ish feel yeah, that they I, were going I, for. I think that was purposeful. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, but whatever tones they used, I just it sounded very dated, like very eighties. Um, it's almost like some parts on. Uh, God Flesh's Street Cleaner. You know, I love Street Cleaner. It's one of my favorite, and God Flesh is one of my favorite metal bands. But you can tell that the technology, you know, no, no fault of their own, but when you hear the the drum samples yeah. and whatnot, it just sounds really old and just not polished. That was kind of the same. So maybe it wasn't an indictment of their songwriting because uh, some of the songs are really cool, and I like the classical compositions. But what, the, what did you think of Saltarello? By the way, maybe sorry to interrupt, but I was really wondering because I I really really like that track. I was wondering what you thought of that. Um, it's it's the second track in it has it has that really weird beat going on. I uh, I don't know if I I don't really recall it specifically. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll have to, to listen to it yeah, and get back, yeah, get back to, to you. It, but get yeah, back I, to you I, offline. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but, okay. yeah. Mainly, it was just it was just it was the sound. It was the sound of the instruments that just did not vibe with me. It just really... Mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of awkward because obviously it's not their fault. Like, that's just the technology instruments they had uh, at the time. I, I, I don't know because, I mean, Aeon came after Serpent's Egg. So were we, we're, we're talking 80s here, right? Or do, are we dipping into the 90s yeah. now? Oh, I, I, I think Aeon might be in the 90s. Let me see. Because we're just so professional that we don't even fucking research <laughs> this stuff. Oh my god, we suck. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Serpent's Egg is nineteen eighty eight. Aeon is nineteen ninety. So okay, yeah. yeah. And of course, you have you have people at the time who were were you know had better uh, you know kind of electro or whatever they used to 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 me i also should throw in that i'm usually not a huge fan of that kind of error of music honestly um like the 80s no just the no the the renaissance era like music from that era uh, and uh i mean there's some ways you know like baroque pop nowadays where they can incorporate it tastefully but that is probably one of my least favorite types of classical music so that certainly didn't help um mm. Yeah, but, I, I, I personally can't, I have really, I have a lot of trouble getting into classical music that's like, you know, pre-modern, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but, um, it, you know, it's it's funny that you think about Eon, you know, because I, when I listen to it, I, I really don't even, like, when, he, when it comes to, like, the tones and things like that, I just never even thought of it like that. So it, it's sort of interesting to see that opinion because like for me eon a- aeon was always like you know um i mean like, like you said like it, it's like their renaissance album in a way yeah like i mean they, i i think they they always include like a number of different world influences but you 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 see like you know medieval like more eurocentric music yep. sort of taking like a foothold in here whereas like in into the labyrinth i felt like took a little more uh like eastern like a little more like arabic mm-hmm. influence like especially on uh the the first track of into the labyrinth uh yolunga which is probably my favorite deck and dance song um it, it, oh my god i i that's probably my favorite deck and dance album is into the labyrinth just because uh i i some of my favorite songs are on that but um just i it, like i felt like their, their songwriting was really really strong there um but i think more than anything i think 
you know, Into the Labyrinth showed Lisa Dreyer's vocals. Mm-hmm. Better vocal. Well, uh, Spleen and Ideal and uh, Within the Realm are are really good albums too that showcase her vocals. I, I think they all showcase her vocals very well, but I think you know there are parts of Into the Labyrinth that really really got to me. Um, and the funny thing is because like the weird thing is like, is, is like some of my favorite tracks are like the ones with Brendan Perry singing. Though, mm-hmm. As strange as that is, but oh my god, like like Lisa Gerard makes this band for me. Like I. You know, I mean, you, you you know that I'm like a huge fan of like Florence and the Machine and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I, I I cannot think of a better female singer than Lisa Gerard. Honestly, I, I I think she's one of the most talented vocalists ever. Just I like the way she uses her voice. She has such power mm-hmm. to it, and um, it, it it's actually funny her range because like, like I've played um some stuff from her solo album before uh the mirror pool which is very good by the way Sanvian I am your shadow is a great track anybody should check it out it's it's really really good it, like I dare you not to cry when you listen to it but um it, it no it's it, it's like it's it pulls on your heartstrings man um but she I I was I was playing this and I think my mom came in she's like. Ah, huh, who's that man singing? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, fucking shit, mom. Like, just <laughs> like fucking Lisa Gerard, man. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. I, I, I really, I, I, I love the way she sings, especially her use of uh, it's called uh, glossolalia, which is just you know like basically making up languages. Uh-huh. Uh Like, like, like a lot of her lyrics aren't really like you know, written down lyrics. They're just you know sort of like nonsense in a way but they be but not in the way that they're meant to be nonsense it's just that it, it's it's more like she's singing for the track yeah that's the best way i can put it um what what, what did you what did you think because you know um i was just wondering what what you thought of her singing i really i really did like her uh, her singing um yeah. uh i i thought uh well, I'm sorry, forgive me. What's what's the name of the the, the man in the oh, band? Oh, Brandon Perry. Yeah, I thought his thing was was fine. I mean, yeah. You know, it, 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 I, uh, there's nothing really to, to detract from it, but um, it really her singing was by far the better of the duo. Yeah, uh, well, and I I, I I agree. Yeah, no, you, you, you go. yeah. I was gonna say I agree that you know it had you know just she had so much power and and I I loved like you said her range and her ability mm. to. To sing a, a bunch of different ways and to match the theme of the track, the music of the track. Um, yeah, I mean, I, re- I really have no. Um, I, I have no, no, yeah, no, 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 nothing to criticize it for. I, I really, uh, one of my favorite parts of the band was, was her singing. Um, really, really uh, interesting and unique. Uh, and, you know, I don't, you, obviously, you don't know Jimmy as well as I do, but. Um, for him to say that in reference to Florence Welch, that's huge. <laughs> that's pretty yeah, goddamn little, big. I, I'm surprised you. L- L- Lungs is one of my favorite albums ever. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I I do love me some Florence. And you you plan on marrying her someday, so that might be an awkward <sighs> conversation. Yeah, when, when you tell her that uh, you think that. Yeah, um, like, sorry, sorry, babe. Lisa's <laughs> a better singer, man. <laughs> oh man. Like, uh, I, I, I knew I had no chance to begin with, but now it's like even less. <laughs> oh, man. I, uh, I, I, I think it's worth mentioning that Brendan Perry is, um, like, like I, I, I think we sort of discredit him a little bit because Lisa Dreyer is just such, such a talent when it comes yeah. to her vocals. But he's, I, I really think that he's a good singer. Um, but like he, it's not like he, he never, you know goes out of key or anything like that he's he has yeah. a very good voice it's just that like um i just feel like lisa has a lot of like energy and just passion behind hers that sort of just rockets her into the stratosphere yeah absolutely um but i i think it, it's worth just knowing that that it, it's a duo it takes both of them to make an album like this um you yeah, know and, and, and i'll mention like i said i think my favorite song from them that i heard across all, all the albums we listened to was um, in the kingdom of the blind, the one eyed or Kings. And he's singing on that track. And I think he does yeah. a fantastic job. 
yeah he, um, he, he definitely has like he has a distinct voice he does yeah yeah which like would you i don't know if you'll remember this the very last track of into the labyrinth uh how fortunate the man with none i was i was wondering what, what you thought of that i don't remember you're gonna kill me i don't really remember yeah. that uh, no, it, it's okay they, uh, you, you listen to a lot of music uh so <laughs> i really don't blame you um <laughs> but yeah i yeah I, I just i i i'm a little biased like i i really love this band um i, I really i just think i think when it comes to flaws i i think the songwriting can definitely sometimes be a little you know hit or miss depending on what era you're going in i think you know, like I've said before, Within the Realm and Spleen Ideal are very similar albums. Like, I, I felt like that they weren't different enough mm-hmm. to uh, to sort of include in this. Uh, whereas the rest of these are really good. And then, uh, I mean, th- this is the core of their album, the core of their discography right here. Because, I mean, aside from those two albums, there's Anas- Anastasia, uh, anyway, Anastasis, uh, which is their newest, I think 2011. Or 2012 it came out and then um spirit chaser which came before that which mm-hmm. I, is a really is a really cool album too um which i i consider that to be like sort of like their african album um it, it's it, i i think it's really it, it's it's probably not very accurate for me to designate these things as like oh they're this album because i think that there's so much more that goes into them but yeah for me, whenever I whenever I put them on, I'm like, oh yeah, like <laughs> it's it's this, but um, yeah. So I I, I I thought it'd be cool just to talk about this you know, a little bit, you know, talk about some dead can dance. Um, yeah. Hey, any uh, any final words? No, I, I, even though I didn't have new necessarily as positive reaction as as you've had to their music, I'm I'm glad I listened to them. You, you know. Uh, kind of like Jimmy alluded to at the beginning, you know, there's there's only so much time, and there's a hell of a lot of, you know, quote unquote classic artists that you are supposed to listen to and enjoy. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it's nice to have an excuse to listen to, you know, because they've been on the list for a while. Of, oh, I got to check them out. I got to check them out. Um, I, I'd list other bands on that I need to check out, but I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, um, I, I know. Um, like, it's kind of like when you say I haven't seen that movie, and people are like, "You haven't seen that? Oh yeah, what's wrong yeah. with you?" Like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, uh, I I get you. I, I it, it's worth saying that um, they they take a couple listens to really get into. Like, I, I remember listening to uh, the Serpent's Egg, and just like I was like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> like, because I, I mean, like I think part of it was just like astonishment. Like, I I would just I literally never heard anything even close to like. To, to similar to this so but um i i think sometimes like the these albums are they, they they take time to grow yeah sort of for sure um so you know a and i i you know i i think everybody sort of has their own favorite too when it comes to them as well mm. um yeah like a lot of people think like serpent's egg is their best which i mean you know not, not disagreeing there um i think it's a good album i, I think they're all good albums in their own way so but all right i think that is it um thanks for listening you guys we'll uh talk to you guys next week great thanks for listening see you